Hey, this video is what an American think about Tibet. I know China, Tibet's part of China, but Tibet's also its own country in reality. So I'm going to do that. Plus, I've never been to China. Um, Tibet, um, yeah, really friendly people, um, kind of really. Uh, kind of look like their own race, like they're really dark. And they have this, like, really, really thick, black, curly, curly, curly afro hair. And, like, Asians don't really have, like, curly hair. They've got the curly afros, and they're really dark. And got the really fat faces. Kind of like, you know, Native Americans, sort of. Um, unfortunately, there's more Chinese living there. Nine, nine million Chinese, seven million Tibetans, and most of the buildings are Chinese. Really ugly, blue-tiled buildings. But, um, no, but Tibetans are really nice, like... Uh, I did, I went to, uh, well, I mean, I was in one little village where they had this, like, big monastery, and I went to pee, where these construction workers were working, and they're like, we're going to cut your dick off, but I think they were joking, but they just didn't want me to pee there, but, um, anyways, uh, I went into, uh, Pota uh, Poca um, Lhasa, and, uh, they're really friendly, because, like, I didn't have any money, because I, like, couldn't get any money there, because they don't, because goddamn Chinese don't take, like, my visa card, and that was, like, the only money I had, so I had to sell all my shit, and, like, all these, like, street vendors, like, collected all the money and gave me, like, 30 bucks, all these, like, Tibetan street vendors, so they had, like, compassion for me, <laughs> but, like, um, there is, like, they do their prostrations in the middle of the road, in the middle of the highway, like, with all the roads driving around, cars driving around them, like, avoiding them, and they weren't even afraid, like, I would have been terrified, I mean, like, kissing the earth, fucking buses driving around me, um, but, uh, because that's what they've been doing for hundreds of years, you know, because they have to do that completely around the Potala Palace, it's like their prostrations, one of their, like, religious things, that was kind of trippy, um, and then, the, but they have lots of, like, uh, you know, they have, like, the arguments, we, and we went to one thing where, uh, there's all these kids, all these, like, hundreds of, uh, monks in this one big field, this, outside of this, in the city, um, this one yard, um, debating, so it was, like, this huge, loud, like, ah, all these people talking, like, practically yelling, and they'd be, like, smacking each other, their hands together, like, when, they, I guess when they make their, their point, they would do that, but they'd be, like, moving around and dancing around, it was, like, a dancing, um, debate, <laughs> but it'd be, like, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, and I guess sometimes you'd see, like, maybe three there talking, but it was interesting, I would have loved to hear what they're talking about, um, but, uh, yeah, they're really, uh, really, uh, Tibetans themselves are really friendly. Their, their English is really hard to understand, though. Like, our tour guide, I could barely understand what he was saying. I didn't even bother to ask him to repeat himself, because he had a lot to say, but I didn't understand it. Um, the whole city, the whole country itself is really, uh, really barren. Like, no trees anywhere. You know, even when you're driving down, like, the valley with the river, it's just, like, a couple of trees next to the river. Um, but, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Um, in some of those monastery towns, it seemed like they were in the middle of nowhere. You drive forever. It's a big place. This country's a big place. You drive, like, for, I don't know how they got around then. Because you drive forever and forever, and then there's, like, some, like, village in the middle of nowhere with a big monastery right there, like, an ornate... But, um, yeah. And they eat momos. Momos is the food they eat. It's like, it's like, uh, folded up, uh, uh, dough. Where they would have, like, boiled vegetables inside. It tasted really good. It was really healthy. Um, that's, like, the national meal. The Protala Palace there is, like, really big, really huge. And it's built on top of a hill. So it's like really high, like multi level lovers levels. But anyways, um, yeah, what an American think about Tibet. Um, the Chinese man, were kind of rude though. Like my chi the Chinese, like we went and stayed at a hotel, a big Chinese hotel we were supposed to stay at, and then like when they found out, the guy found out I didn't have any money, he was like angry with me, and he seemed like he'd be angry with us anyways. Just generally, it was just really rude. Like we were annoying him by being there, and then I found out I didn't have money, and, like, the Chinese, one of the Chinese workers at the hotel, like, 
wanted to hang out with me while I went and got noodles, and I was talking to him, and, like, I thought he was hanging out with me for that, but it, he wasn't saying anything about me because he didn't understand English, but it was just kind of weird. I kind of had the impression that maybe he was spying on me or something, but... Um, and you could you can tell the difference between who's Tibetan and who's Chinese there still. Tibetans are darker skinned and um, curlier hair. But uh, anyways, when I think about Tibet, barren whole country is barren, and just to the north of the, of Mount Everest, it's totally flat. Be crazy. Just flat plains that are really high too. So.